ladies and gentlemen, Jay Campbell is about to come on and talk to you about how to become fully optimized in all aspects of your physical, mental, and spiritual health. Before we dive into that, I'm talking to you because you're becoming your greatest possible self. Specifically, when you're ready to get your message out to more people and be a guest on the 12-Hour Marathon, I'd love to speak to you, see how we can support you in either doing that or getting prepared and trained to do that. Or when you're ready to launch your podcast and your own platform, would love to support you in doing that as well. So let's talk. You can find me on Facebook dot com forward slash th3 burns instagram at i am millionaire chris and chris at be your gps dot com for the email so look forward to hearing from you next up is the itunes review of the week and this week it's by hannah 1125 and hannah says always a nugget chris shows up with such authentic interest in the guest and the audience Every single show has a golden nugget that I can start implementing in my life right away. It feels like Chris really believes we can all become our greatest self. Consistently shows us how. If this isn't in your ear, you are missing out on loads of inspiration, action, and your own greatness. Hannah, thank you so much for sharing that. If you want a chance to get shouted out on a future marathon, go to beergps.com forward slash iTunes or search Greatest Possible Self on the iTunes store. Give us a review. Let us know what you love about the show, what you want to see more of, and definitely subscribe while you're there so you can keep getting charged up and amped up to become your GPS and uh, you'll get a chance to get shouted out on a future marathon when you do that review. I love you. Thank you so much for being here. I'm going to introduce Jay in just a second here. Before that, grab a piece of paper, grab a pen, be ready to take notes, and also just like be ready to have your mind blown. I can feel it. This conversation is going to be epic, deep, transformational, and uh, raise the consciousness of the planet. So let's introduce Jay, and then we'll bring him on the screen. Jay Campbell is a four times international best-selling author, founder of TOT Revolution and the TOT Revolution and Optimized Life podcasts, and a global evangel evangelist teaching men and women and their doctors how to optimize their hormones, their life, and their happiness. He's a no-nonsense, authentic, and in-your-face guy in the day and age when being hyper-masculine is frowned on, and he's not afraid to give us the fully transparent scoop on hormone optimization. Since coming back from 12 days in the Sacred Valley of Peru, he has experienced a seismic spiritual shift, manifesting in a profound new mission of raising the collective vibration of humanity so we reach planetary consciousness, a.k.a unconditional love and we are blessed to have jay with us here today jay are you ready to rock the house my man and i'm so honored to be here today man thank you so much for being here, for uh, offering me this opportunity and i am ready to uh, elevate the vibration my friend Ooh, let's elevate so the first question of today jay is the power of authority what does that mean to you the power of authority jay um, the power of authority, I mean, essentially to me, it means how much can you get other people collectively to understand the reason why we're all here. And the reason that we are all here is to stop doing all the things that we have been doing to each other for thousands of years, which is, as you know, death, violence, murder, anger, grudge, victim. I mean, I could go on and on with negative uh, statements, but I'm all about positivity like you. Right. And, and, and we are here to collectively elevate the vibration of all of humanity, which you already referred to as planetary consciousness. That's what matters. People ask me today, like, man, what is what's important? Like, what are you trying to do? It's like, I'm not trying to get paid. I'm not trying to collect shiny things. I had all that stuff in my past, man. That stuff doesn't mean anything. When we die, Chris, we're not taking anything with us except our love and our memories, hopefully. Dude, dude, <laughs> fired up, man. I love it. I love it. So planetary consciousness, we are raising that. And before we get into that that whole phase and, and empowering people with that, man, tell us a little bit more about TOT Revolution and what you're doing to support your clients today, as well as how you're bridging that into raising planetary consciousness, man. Sure, man. So, um, you know, back about five years ago, God, a lot of time flies. Uh, I wrote my first book, which was the definitive TRT manual, mm -hmm. how to optimize your testosterone for lifelong health and happiness. Um, it became really a planetary sensation. It was obviously written at a time when a lot of people um, outside of the bodybuilding slash, you know, performance enhancing community knew nothing about um, testosterone and how mm -hmm. if used in therapeutic ways, it could extend and enhance life. Um, as a therapeutic testosterone user myself, for many years previous to that, I had a lot of people in my network, in my inner circles and whatnot, had say, dude, you need to write a book. You know so much about this. You're such a biochemical nerd. 
Um, and, and as you know, Chris, I'm not an MD. I do not have any kind of formal medical training. Um, I do have a molecular bio minor in college, but I mean, it's so long ago and it's so meaningless. And obviously so much has changed from that understanding from when I graduated from college in 1993. Um, but, you know, I wrote the book and it, I'm very blessed it extended an opportunity for me to network with amazing physicians and also researchers, um, you know, in the pharmaceutical medical community. Um, and subsequently, since then, I've, as you kind of already mentioned, I've written four other books. Um, I've really gotten into um, the side of what I call healthcare optimization, which is mm. way beyond testosterone or hormone optimization. It's really life optimization, right? Yep. Which we're going to talk about here today, which is all encompassing, right? It's body, mind, spirit, um, obviously emotional. Um, so, you know, I'm now, as I told you when we first talked, which is a long time ago now, time flies, brother, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, transitioning my brand, which is, of course, very successful in the TOT Revolution website space. Um, to Jay Campbell, you know, blank, insert, whatever. I kind of like right now, you know, my avatar is spiritual warrior. Yes. Um, but it's going to be something at that level and evolved. And, uh, you know, my goal is to bring as many people, men and women, babies, children, animals, you know, everything that's conscious, all life has consciousness with me so that we can get to a point where, man, the, the, the planet stops fighting. Mm -hmm. We stop the violence. We stop the scarcity. We stop lack. We stop all those negative adjectives that we don't need to have anymore, even the word need, right? I mean, it's a choice to be who we are. And that's that's where we're going. You know, I'm all about, you know, you hear the consciousness community talk about ascendance and getting into ascension and getting into different higher dimensional frequencies and stuff. And whether that's true or not, and I kind of believe that it is or kind of know that it is, that's where we're all going. And some of us are going there at faster rates and speeds than others. But my goal is to bring as many people along with me to that higher vibration, man. It's fast, fast as humanly possible. Boom. I love it. Dude, we're going to dive into that even more. Before that, though, let's talk about your journey of, uh, you know, the the therapeutic testosterone. Why, why was that an important uh, milestone in your journey to really dive deep into that, man? Yeah, it's a great question. Um, honestly, you know, when I look back in my life, I'm 48 years old now. I'm literally four months away from being, or five months away from being 49. I've, I've almost reached that midpoint. Um, I've had many dark nights of the soul, as I told you before, which we can probably get into. But uh, therapeutic testosterone, when it happened to me at 29, 30, it was almost 30. It was like about a month before I turned 30. It was just a random occurrence. I was a basketball player in a you know, very uh, high performance adult men's basketball league. I kicked in the testicles. Uh, about three months later, broke down, was very fortunate. And of course, there's no coincidences, right? But I was very fortunate. I went to a PPO doctor at the time. I worked for the Los Angeles Times. And he referred me to an endocrinologist. And he said, you know what? The endocrinologist was a Harvard-educated guy, brilliant dude. Uh, it's funny because as I tell the story, I think back of all the random chance things that happened for me to be on this path. And as you know, there's nothing random and nothing nope. chance in the, in the realm of the quantum. So he said, let me run your, some tests on you. Um, and he did, and it came back that I had um, what is called in the scientific community um, class two hypogonadism, which is essentially I had a, de a defective, um, you know, one of my testicles was probably defective from being kicked in it. So anyway, he said, hey, I can put you on therapeutic testosterone. What do you think about that? Being a smart guy uh, and science background, molecular bio and stuff like that, you know, I said, let me go home and talk to my wife at the time, who's no longer my wife anymore. God bless her. She's, you know, where she is now. She's a good, great person. But uh, she, you know, said, hey, you know, you're a smart guy. If you trust the doctor, do it. So I did it. And, you know, eight weeks later, I felt absolutely amazing. He wanted to take me off like another four weeks later. said, hey, I can, you know, you're probably back to normal now. I don't need to be on. I was like, whoa, bro, no. <laughs> You know, like, I'm not going off this. This is like <laughs> Superman, you know, fluid. Yeah. So, um, you know, then at that point, Chris, I became really studious about it. Um, I actually switched physicians because he was in Orange County and I actually moved from the West side um, over to where I am now in the San Gabriel Valley. I live in West Covina. I was in Pasadena at that time that I had moved, but too far away. And so working with many doctors, you know, to fast forward and really to sum this up, like over the next 10 years, I became a nerd and I, I learned everything I could possibly learn about using therapeutic testosterone. And then, as I said, some of my friends were like, dude. So when I was always that guy, when I would show up at like parties or work conventions, people would be like, dude, you are so fit. What are you doing? You know, mm. no filter, Jay Campbell. I'd be like, bro, I use testosterone. And they look at me like, what? You know, like, cause at that time it was like, you're on steroids, bro you know, or whatever. And so I'd always tell them, I'm like, well, actually no. And you know, therapeutic testosterone when used judiciously and under the care of a physician, it's a 
it's life enhancing. Like it's wow. amazing. And so yeah. at that time I was obviously clearly an evangelist and, you know, way at the tip of the spear, very few people outside of, again, the steroid using bodybuilding community. And then of course, performance enhancement and whatever sports even knew anything about this. This is literally, you know, in the late nineties, early two thousands, mid two thousands. Um, so finally a couple of my friends was like, dude, you got to write a book about this. You know, you know, so much. And as I've said this story a million times on many different podcasts, I'll just really speed forward through here. I sent an email to Rick Collins, who's probably the world's leading attorney right now on everything from, you know, WWF, from NFL football, from pro bodybuilding. I mean, he's the performance enhancing guru. Mm -hmm. And I said, hey, Rick, as a non-licensed um, medical person, if I wrote a book on a subject like testosterone, could you guarantee me or indemnify me from any kind of legal harm or safe harbor? And he was like, no, dude, you know, and he read my, it was a white paper at the time, but he read it and he was like, dude, this is amazing. He goes, but no, I can't guarantee any kind of safety. So wow. he told me what the deal was. And so, you know what, dude, I shelved it. But thankfully I also sent the email white paper to Nelson Virgil and yeah. Nelson Virgil at the time was the guy who had written the first really highly successful book on testosterone called testosterone, a man's guide. Mm. And, uh, and I really looked up to him, but he didn't write back to me for about three months after I shelved it with Rick. And he sent me an email in the middle of the night. And he was like, I don't know who you are, but this is unbelievable. Give me uh -huh. your phone number. We need to talk. And so then I told him, I was like, look, I'm not going to do it. Rick's, he's like, I don't care what Rick says. And by the way, we're all friends now. But he said, <laughs> listen, I'm on panels with the DEA and I'm on panels with the FDA. And you don't need to worry about putting that book out there. Mm. Your book is gold. This book needs to be in the hands of men. And fast forward pretty much to the day, he actually mentored me and helped me write the book from there. And then uh -huh. um, some other people got involved. But about a year later, the book came out. And, you know, that was five years ago, brother, and it's been like a whirlwind ever since then. That's all I can tell you. I've been very, very blessed. Dang. That's incredible. So I want to just like give us uh, the the gold nuggets of living an optimized life, physical, mental, sure. uh, spiritual. What what do we need to know, man? So you don't, you know, if you'd asked me, that's a great question. If you'd asked me that two years ago, I'd have been telling you like every single person today on the planet should be hormonally optimized. But now I realize that, um, it's not always just about hormonal optimization. I mean, we could go down the whole path of the war on human, you, you know, human beings or basically humanity right now, like from, you know, biochemical standpoint, right? Yep. Because like, you know, this, we talked about this. I mean, look, even the, the best water in the world is in plastic, <laughs> right? Like, I mean, seriously, like our phones, I mean, you yeah. know, we're getting, we're, we're getting radiated. You and I are being radiated right now. That's why we're wearing our blue light glasses, That's right? right? But the truth is, is that, the modernized style of life is a direct threat and slash deterrent to living fully optimized. Mm. So one must be hyper aware. And that's obviously in our newest book, you know, living a fully optimized life that came out on August 5th. Um, this is literally a step-by-step -step guide um, of what to do, um, you know, to avoid the modernized style of life and how, how we're again, you know, essentially under siege, we're being assaulted everywhere we go, right? Like even when we walk out of our house, the air that we breathe, the stuff that's in the sky, the smog from our cars, the petroleum distillate in the sun, in our dashboards. I mean, you can't Dude. avoid modern life. So what do you do? Well, you have to be hyper aware, like I said, and being hyper aware encompasses many things. It encompasses obviously, um, you know, the physical game, right? Which you got to go to the gym, you got to yep. build muscle, you have to be insulin sensitive. You should obviously monitor what you eat. You should understand the type of genetics you have. I mean, I know I'm kind of speaking in advanced tone right now, but like, you know, a person should know if they're a natural fat person, a naturally lean person, or a naturally muscular person, right? There's yeah. three different types of people anthropomorphically. Um, but you should know those things. And if you do know those things, then you're sure you're going to eat relative to what you can do. So, you know, to your, to your question, you got to build muscle. You got to do some form of cardiovascular, especially as you age. You clearly have to learn the benefits of solid, clean nutrition, mm. eating based on your genetics, understanding your insulin sensitivity, understanding what you know fasting or intermittent fasting is, understanding what carnivore or ketogenic or any of these you know fad quote unquote diets out there. These are mm. things you need to understand. I like to talk about the term in this book called metabolic flexibility. You need to be mm. metabolically flexible. Um, but then there's the whole side of things, which is where I'm, you know, profoundly interested in where everything in my game is going, which is the mindfulness and spiritual component, you know, and mm. I call it spiritual fitness. Mm. My next book, which will be coming out next year is going to be called energy and frequency. 
Yeah. And that is literally the keys, right, to spiritual awareness. And anyone who understands quantum physics or just any basic understanding of quantum entanglement or particle physics or any of that stuff, we you will understand that, like, we truly do create our reality, right? Like, you have the ability to manifest a reality bubble around you 24 hours, seven days a week, yep. right? 365 days a year. And as I say, and again, this is all in this book, and for anyone who's watching this podcast today, you know, because I've got a lot of books out there. I do mm. give away my books for wow. free. Wow. Okay. All you have to do um, is email my team, which is contact at TOT Revolution. So it's testosterone optimization therapy revolution.com. And we will send you out all the books that were written um, prior to this year. So there's two books that have come out this year that we don't give away yet. And that's mm -hmm. right next to each other. It's guaranteed shredded, which is an insane program on intermittent fasting. Yeah. Um, which is optimizing intermittent fasting. And then of course, living a fully optimized life. And these are very cutting edge, very advanced. Like, I mean, when I say advanced, like <laughs> Chris knows me, I'm very advanced <laughs> when I, when I get into these types of topics. So yeah. even living fully optimized life has a whole chapter on quantum physics. Um, but I break it down for people who are, you know, what I call lay. Um, yeah. I think that all my books are written for about a seventh or eighth grade education. So I take very advanced concepts and I, mm -hmm. I, I don't want to say I dumb them down, but I break them down in digestible format so that most people can understand them. Yeah. Um, but dude, that's the key, right? Like we already talked about, you know, elevating the vibration, but once you start understanding quantum mm -hmm. and you start recognizing that we create everything that happens to us in our life you you become more accountable for your actions you know mm. there's two types of people on this planet okay there's those that are in what i call victim and savior okay uh, mindsets or templates and then there's the people like you and me and most people who are accountable for their actions and that is uh sovereign source consciousness mm. right so everything is my fault i take ownership for every decision i've ever made and every decision I've ever made has led to me being in the position that I am right now, right? So when you're in that side of the of the world, life becomes much easier because it's always your fault. Mm. It's always your responsibility. It's yeah. not the government, my uncle, my bad car, my bad job, my bad <laughs> knee. It's you, right? So it's like quantum physics teaches everything. It's right there for us. It's this the mirror, right? The cosmic mirror, the universal mirror. Yeah. What you put out is what comes back to you. So Jay, I want to ask a quick question about the word fault because I've heard the word responsibility. I create my reality. So typically people have a negative connotation and energy around the word fault, Absolutely. but I'm hearing you use it in an empowering way. Can you make a distinction for us around that? Yeah, for sure. Um, so remember how you speak, meaning inflection, tonality, vibration because again everything has vibration right yeah. again energy and frequency how you speak it is really how it applies in wow. your reality bubble so when i say the word fault right you just you hit it right out of the, out of the park i'm using it in a productive way empowering to, it's my exactly, fault right exactly <laughs> so but it's true right like if you can't take ownership for every decision that you've ever made, you're not going to advance in any capacity on this planet. Wow. And again, two, two, you know, two reality templates. Are you a savior victim? Mm. And again, you know, let's define this. What, what is a victim? A victim is blame everybody else. It's not my fault. Mm. They then latch on to the guru who's the savior because I'm going to now mimic the savior because the savior is going to save me versus the people of what I call four, five, six, seven D, who are accepting that they are sovereign and free and have a choice, right, to embrace source consciousness, which as you already mentioned earlier in the day, is planetary consciousness. And all planetary consciousness really is, is when we as a collective body of people understand that we're all one mm -hmm. and that every single one of us is equal. We all have the ability to do whatever we choose to do. We all have, again, this ability to manifest our frequency, to manifest our reality. And when we realize that, you know, the, the poorest plumber in Baja, Mexico mm. is as good as Richard Branson or Elon Musk, then that's when we get to a point where all the nonsense of violence and war and mm. scarcity and fighting over oil and energy and all this stupidity ends. Sounds, it's not, you know that. Yeah. 
Yeah. Oh my gosh. I love it. I love it, Jay. This is freaking powerful. So I want to dive into your journey to, uh, you said Peru, you went to Peru and that was a yeah, big man. transformational experience for you. Tell us a little about, a little bit about that. Man, that, it's, when I say it, I kind of get chills. As you can see, my whole wall is like literally all Peru now, man. Like, I love it. It was like the most transformational. Peru is, Peru is really like an energy. Let me get some other things here. It's like, it's so hard to describe like when you go into Peru and you see wow. um you know the the ruins and the 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 ancient stone uh, monuments and just everything that's there it's a different energy bro mm -hmm. i mean i i don't know how else to say it like you have to truly experience it right like i could yeah. i could speak the words and i could explain it in rich detail but until you're actually there and you feel the energy that comes out of the sacred valley um, it's hard to it's it's hard to really truly explain, but it changed me profoundly. And in the eleven days um, that we were there, uh, my wife and I and my sales director George, who's hopefully watching this, shout outs, what's up, brother, um, and his wife, we were we were literally profoundly transformed. I mean, when we went to Lake Titicaca, which is again one of the seven wonders of the world. There's two seven wonders of the world in Peru. There's obviously Machu Picchu, um, which you know pretty much everybody knows about, which is right here. Mm -hmm. If people can see it, you know, it's a painting, it's a hand painting. But, you know, Machu Picchu is this amazing city built into this mystical mountain fortress, which was hidden from society and civilization, um, allegedly, until 1913. Uh, but it's truly amazing. Yeah, I mean, you know, again, when you when you have eyes upon it, you see it. It's just spectacular. Um, but it's just like I said, it's like there's an energy about Peru. A lot of people talk about like vortexes or vortices or mm -hmm. portals. Or whatever, but I think that at this time of the Earth right now, we can get into this. Um, the energy of the cosmos is truly changing and expanding across the globe right now, and many, many people are feeling this energy. Um, you know, it kind of manifests as a feeling of like um, I don't know how to describe it. Like you just wake up sometimes and you have more questions than you have answers. Mm. That's kind of where we're going into right now. Obviously, we're entering the age of Aquarius. We're already really in the age of Aquarius. Mm. And that energy represents different than the previous age, which was the age of Pisces. Mm. Um, and being in Peru, tr in my opinion, exacerbates the feeling of being in these, this energy because – Obviously, there's not nearly as much smog or pollution as there are in the industrialized worlds of America and stuff like that. So the air is cleaner. Um, you're at a high elevation like we stayed in Cusco. The whole Sacred Valley is like 8,400 to 18,000 feet above sea level. Lake Titicaca is the highest navigable lake in the world, and it's actually at 13,600 feet above sea level. And when you're on the lake, it's like a giant ocean. Wow. And there are people that live on the island. I mean, live on the water. They're called the Euros people. They literally live on straw islands. Um, so it's just, it's just, it's literally like I say to everybody uh, when I talk about Peru, it's the land that time forgot. Mm -hmm. uh, but the people, the indigenous, and there's a lot of different groups of indigenous people there. There's like the Tiwanaku people. There's obviously the Inca. There's a lot of different people there. Um, man, they have the light. Man, like they're known as the children of the light. And um, they really are pretty resistant to the trappings of modern day technology that obviously we have in North America and obviously most first world societies. And, uh, and when you're there, you can just feel the energy of the people too. And they're just, it's different. I mean, it really, it really is different. I mean, as I told you, when we first started talking, um, when, when I first got back, my wife and I were like, you know, what are we, what are we going to do with this? Like, she, by the way, my wife was just as inspired, just as moved. Um, you know, we've thought about like creating like a retreat there, mm. you know, for like people yes. like us, you know, successful yes. entrepreneurs and whatnot who want to go there and experience life, you know, unchecked life without their cell phone, life That's without right. screens, That's right? right? And, and get back to our roots, get back to who we really are. It's necessary. It's like it's necessary to have that awareness that something else exists, you know, for the person yeah. who's it, it, and even no matter how successful or unsuccessful you are, there's there's the range of I'm either tied and dependent and addicted to the right. cell phone or I'm I'm able to like distance myself from that and create the peace and the the depth within myself. Whether someone's like just starting out on their entrepreneurial journey and they have that peace or they're making billions of dollars like that, the range is always going to be there. So I, I always believe that there's deeper that we can go into ourself and our source and our own guidance, man. Uh, so I agree, you know, to, to that point, um, you know, my good friend, Mike Cernovich wrote a blog about seven years ago. I remember it was about like, what is your enough? Hmm. And 
until you as a sovereign, you know, free individual person can define what enough is, because so many people, especially a lot of people in the entrepreneur space are guilty of this, right? Like, I got to get that 5 million yep. and then 5 million becomes 10 million and then 10 million becomes 50 million. And then, you know, on and on. And then it never ends mm. and you never have enough. So until you get to that point where you can truly define what is enough. And for me, and again, we all different, but for me, enough is where I am blessed without waking up in the morning, you know, afraid to scratch a check or yeah. it might yeah. be, and, and, and it's beyond that for me too. It, you know, for me, it's seeing my daughters happy, seeing my wife happy, right. being able to live the life that I live with my wife right now, which is essentially, and you know this, it's written. I started this in December of 2016. That every eight weeks, we were going to be in an exotic destination. Yes. Come hell or high water. It did not matter. <laughs> life responsibilities, financial breaks, yeah. anything was not stopped. And we would plan beginning of every year and every year was mapped out and we have now lived that life for three consecutive years. And I'm proud to say that I don't see any signs of it stopping. Um, but again, you know, you have to define what, you know, people talk about their why, but mm. to me, it's what is your enough? When do you feel like you've reached a level, not the pinnacle, but just a level where you feel like the hustle is over, yeah. right? Like now it's about, enjoying and exploring and experiencing mm. because that's where we get lost. And so many people, and I was one of these people was like, it's all about defining everything and figuring out life's mysteries and solving all these questions and stuff like that. But now I realize it's more about feeling and experiencing, dude, you got to go and actually quote unquote, do the work and feel the work. Yeah. Well, I think it's, it's both like, well, I hear the masculine completion aspect, yep. like got to yep. get it closed, got to get it complete, got to achieve yeah. the thing. And that you get to that level of, okay, I've achieved enough. I've created stability. I've created right. impact. I've created, you know, a significant infrastructure yep. so that I can go really dance or play and experience the feminine aspect. But it's, it's always both, right? you like, you don't say, okay, I'm going to go play and live as a hermit for the rest of my life. No, right. like we get to keep building and impacting and serving people's lives and experience both aspects aspects of our, our reality. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. It's, it's gold. It's gold, man. I love it. So um, bringing this message back of, of you know, awakening humanity, ascending consciousness, uh, tell us a little bit more about how you're, you're bringing that message to people around you and you're, you're writing this book, going into the future. Tell us how you're bringing that message back, man. It's a, another good question. I appreciate you asking it. it. You know, for me, it's about how many people can I impact mm you know, in the like day-to-day -day life, right? Because like one of the things I learned from since I came back from um, Peru was, um, you know, this whole, and, we, and again, we all talk about this in the consciousness space or community, but like, you know, the past doesn't matter, right? And mm -hmm. tomorrow hasn't happened. So we only have now, right? I mean, we can all go back to, you know, the power of now and, you know, all these books that talk about living in the now and living in the moment and the precious present and all that stuff. But it's like reading it and understanding it mm -hmm. and doing it are always you know, separate things. Yeah. And for me now, it's like every day when I wake up, how many people can I impact that day? Mm -hmm. And sure, you know, I could show you, which I've done on previous podcasts, like this is my day, Chris, you know, this is where <laughs> I have my mindfulness training. And this is, you know, this is the prayers. And right, right. You know, here's my affirmation. I mean, dude, the, the reality to me is like, how many people can you impact on a day in day out basis? Mm -hmm. And how can you continually keep that up and consistently do that? And honestly, it's going to sound simplistic and probably, you know, silly, but I use WhatsApp, right? Mm. Like I have all these groups that I mentor younger men. I mentor uh, a bunch of people spiritually. Probably a lot of those people are watching this right now, hopefully, um, because I wanted them to watch this today, right? Because mm. I knew that I was, you and I were going to make greatness and it's happening, you know? And again, I manifested this. You manifest this. Every time you get on a podcast, bro, That's you right. manifest greatness. Of course you do. That's right. This is you have to manifest greatness because if you don't, then you're just allowing the energy of the universe to dictate <sighs> whatever comes. And it's like the, the moment, the moment, the gift. Am I savoring the gift? Am I exactly. receiving? Am I activating it? <laughs> exactly. So so you know, it goes back to me. It's am I day in and day out yeah. doing what obviously derives joy and fulfillment for me, which I know that's never an issue, but am I helping more people? Mm -hmm. And it's again, you know, simplistic as it is, it can never get more simplistic. It's all about service to others. Okay. Yeah. But you really, you know, as a sovereign, free, empowered, source consciousness, you know, templated person, you must understand 
that you should not serve every person <laughs> that's not right in service to others. And that's mm-hmm. where people get lost because sometimes, especially really good natured people, and you know this, yeah. they serve people that they shouldn't be serving. And I'm not like, you know, labeling people or judging anyone right now, but you have to be conscious of those that you should be serving and those that you should not be serving. Discernment, discernment. Exactly. Discernment is the word. But again, it's just for me, it's like if I wake up in the morning and I know that I was able to push out an amazing amount of content that I know a lot of like-minded people were able to read and digest, Mm. or even if it was just a short moment's notice of observation, Mm. I did my job for that day. And then, you know, the momentum, because Dude, momentum is everything. Right now, with this changing earth frequency, being able to continue creation, and again, conscious co-creation, I'm always, you know, giving service to, um, you know, not, I don't want to say look upstairs at, you know, God, because obviously God is many things to many people, but to me, it's internal, right? Yes. Um, And, you know, that power is internal. That higher self is part of you. God is part of you. But the reality is, is like you have to continue your momentum. And you can't just take a week and a day off. And I know as a creator, as a content generator, a lot of people do have down times. You know, as a writer myself, there's times where I just feel like, hey, I don't have creation. That's the way it is. Mm. But you still can find other outlets and other means to continue your momentum. And that, to me, is where we're really going as an energy body, as a collective, um, from a consciousness standpoint, is keeping the momentum going so that enough of us mm-hmm. can, you know, essentially literally reach hyperspace yeah. and bring more people with us into that higher dimensional frequency. Cause it really is about getting into, you know, again, people call it 4D, 5D, 6D, whatever, yeah. but it's about getting into that, activating those latent DNA circuits, right. Mm. That, you know, people call it tuned, tuned off or junk DNA, which is obviously nonsense, mm. but it's turning the DNA that is not active in your body on so that you mm. can experience, experience a higher frequency you can in- increase your intelligence you can increase your skills you can increase everything because it's all out there for the taking it's just you know how bad are you going to want it and then how bad are you going to work and act to manifest it so let's talk about the the process or a um, set a, a journey milestones set some of those for people um, because the ascension process there's probably different uh, energies and right. like levels that we get to own and embody so that we can get to the next level so that we can bridge together the steps can you tell us a little bit more about that Jay yeah so I mean I think everybody has their own journey mm-hmm. um, I, I don't think I mean I know we all have our own journey but like. As far as like where we are, you know, on the essential, the first thing, the first step that you have to take is ownership for everything that happens to you. Yep. Because you're not going to go anywhere from a vibrational level. And that's, again, to me, that's the, that's the goal. Um, um, obviously, while we're all here to increase planetary consciousness. And again, you know, your essential process is, is to each his own. We all have mm-hmm. our own journey and our own spiritual, um, you know, move, uh, you know, p- path that we follow. But the first step is always obviously taking ownership. The second mm-hmm. step, is after you take ownership is to be creative, mm. to not be an observer in life, to participate. Yeah. Dude, as you know, and we haven't talked anything about this, but social media is demonic, okay? Mm. It is a tool and it can be used for very many amazing and benevolent things. And obviously you and I are connecting through the power of technology and social media right now. But if you use it as a tool um, versus it using you, and as mm. you know, At least, at least, and and not your community or people watching this right now, but the majority of people on the earth, technology uses them. That's right. They're not using technology. So Mm -hmm. that second step is utilizing, you know, obviously being creative, but using the tools that we have at our disposal, which have never been greater in the history of humanity that we know of, at least in this time and epic, Mm -hmm. um, to create amazing, wonderful things. You're creating amazing, wonderful things every time you do a, um, you know, a giant blast all day where you have great people come on and talk about all these amazing things, right? Like that's awesome creation. You're creating content that gives back forever. As you know, I'm just like that. I put put out massive amounts of content, right? I have two more podcasts today. Um, So the more that you're putting out messaging that Mm -hmm. is again of a state where it, it elevates the vibration of others, it teaches and it gives people um, wisdom and advice, then you're on that path. And then I would say the fourth way is 
you you definitely have to have that connection with your inner 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 guide, your mm. your God, your source, yep. your wisdom, your, your your again whatever it is that you spiritually uh, um, you know um, evolve to or or, or 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 give credit to. That's yeah. that part of your life is is essential. And you know, for me, every day it's contemplation. Mm. You know, it's giving, knowing that I'm a humble servant. Mm. You know, yeah. like I don't come off as a humble servant, right? I have so much passion and I'm like so <laughs> gregarious and I'm outspoken and charismatic and all these things, but I am truly grateful and humble mm. that God has given me this position or given me this power to be here talking to you right now. So, I mean, that, if that was, that would be my four steps on the process. Brother. Mm, I love it. I love it. I especially love the last one. Uh, Cause I feel like on my journey of, of thinking that I'm in, it's like, there's a difference between being responsible and empowered by, I create my reality and yeah. the ego of I've got this. I don't need anyone else. I like, like stay away from me. Cause that's a phase I was at is pretending like I don't need God. I don't need love. I don't need right. parents, friendship, whatever. And that was a really like disconnected place in my life where I, I thought I was disconnected, but like going on the journey, recognizing, okay, first off, I'm the creator of my reality. I love how you said like at the fourth stage, it's like really getting connected with some higher power yes. to tap into because like the human body itself, like I'm recognizing, okay, I'm sovereign. I'm the creator of my own human body and my own reality bubble around me. Now, how do I tap into creating the universe? You know, right. and I think that that's like trusting that we are, we are leveraging a relationship and the creatorship of something much, much bigger than us. That's exactly what it is. It's yeah. literally knowing. It's not even a belief or anything. Mm -hmm. It's like you get to a point where it's a knowing that God is using you, you know, and you are using God, right? Because I mean, if you really understand the deep spiritual, spiritual teachings of like, I could bring up a million things like the Gnostics, the Egyptians, yep. you know, they talked about God was experiencing the experience of existence through all of his creation. Yes. So all of us are a part of that creation. So what we experience and what we go through, and that's obviously ups and downs, mm -hmm. challenges, obstacles, breakups, breakdowns, breakthroughs, all of these things gains experience for quote unquote God. And mm -hmm. really, you know, you can use, you know, the word like the Akashic records. I mean, it's essentially like all of the information that's ever happened in all creation and all times and all dimensions and all realities is that is being pushed into there. And so through it, we all have the ability to experience that. And that to me is like, you know, pretty awesome. <laughs> pretty awesome. <laughs> it is epic. It is like revolutionary, you know, like life changing, man. I, I love it, Jay. This is, this is really, really great stuff. And for everyone who's tuning in right now, this is gold. Take a screenshot, put it up on Instagram, put it up on Facebook, tag us. This is gold, man. So I really want to dive into when you, you mentioned earlier about, you know, empowering uh, and mentoring people. What are some things that you really, you bring to your mentorship, you bring to your teaching and leadership that you would say makes a successful leader? That's a, another good question. Do you, you, you do this a lot, don't you? <laughs> yes, I do. <laughs> um, you know, for me, um, leadership, well, as you know, first off, um, leadership takes a great deal of patience. Yeah. Um, you know, you, you go back to what you said, which was well said, you know, you talked about having ego, you know, and all of us along this path and you're, you know, way more advanced than I am because you're a lot younger than I am to be where you are. As I told you before, to me is awesome, you know, and I give you great praise and stuff to be at your level already. But I think a lot of younger people today who walk the path that you walk, you guys are all star seeds. I'm a star seed. You know, people in this conscious area and space right now are truly star seeds. We do have latent DNA circuits that we were blessed to either be alive and 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 and, and, and quote unquote attuned, yeah. not not tuned, attuned, right? Mm -hmm. um, to specific um, occurrences and events in our life to just like again, boom, we're aware, hyper aware, yep. um, and so that's a blessing. But you know, realistically, we we have to be able to. Um, have great patience. And when a person is not as aware, not as advanced, not at the same level of knowledge, and again, it could be through many things, it could be through experience, it could be through reading, um, it's okay. Mm. Because all of us, we all evolve and become aware. And again, you know, think of it as again, these latent DNA circuits, which are really just lost conscious memories of yeah. who we really are. Yes. Um, they all come on at a different rate and speed and time. And that's all perfectly okay. And you can never judge another person 
um, or blame another person, or even even more so, and maybe this is really important. Um, you can never speed a person's awareness either. Like it's mm. uh, it truly is spiritual violence to attempt to awaken other people, especially close friends, family members, um, you know, loved ones who you feel aren't where you're at or don't mm. see things at the same perspective that you do. So you have to be really cautious and very careful and also very refined that you accept them mm. for where they are and who they are and allow them to go down that path that they're currently walking in it, because it's okay. And, yeah. you know, there was at times, and you know this, we all do this, but there were times where I was attempting to preach and I was attempting to say, no, no, it's right here. Look at this. Right. And yeah. it doesn't work that way. We yeah. all awaken when we awaken in the pursuit of truth or knowledge or awareness or hyper consciousness or planetary consciousness or any of those things. That's all an individual path. And everyone chooses the path that they want to walk. But truthfully, and I know this, this is 100% in my soul, in my higher self. I know this to be true. We're all walking the same path. Mm. It's just that some of us are walking the path at different declensions and elevations and speeds. And that's all fine and well and good. And don't judge any person who seems to be not at the same level, right? We all have words for them, right? We call them sleepers, normies. You know, whatever you want to call them. But the reality is, is that they're all on the same path. We're all on the path back to perfection. And we're all eventually going to get there. Again, it just when we get there is up to us. Mm. Mm. I, want, I want to say preach it. <laughs> preach it, Jay, in a good way. In, in a, you know, I, I love it. I, I always use the distinction um, committed, not attached, right? Like, hey, my hand's here. I'm so freaking committed to your growth, brother, sister, friend, aunt, uncle, whatever, but I'm not here to force you. I'm not here to make it happen for you. So the door's open and then like to recognize they have their own sovereign journey to be on as well. It's like, it can be challenging in the beginning, but once we just like really love ourselves first, then we recognize we're not here to fix people. We're not here to make them something that, that we think they should be. Like we're here to work on us and, and grow ourselves and remember the unconditional love for ourselves. And just by embodying that and witnessing that and living that, it inspires them to do the same thing. Dude, that's amazing. Let me just give you a great quote from a really awesome spiritual um, person that I follow. His name is uh, Julian Ponzin. He's a young guy like you. So you should definitely, I would recommend, I'll, I'll connect you with him on Facebook. Yeah. He says that people um, have a right to remain asleep mm. for as long as it entertains them. Wow. How powerful is that? Wow. <laughs> But I mean, I mean, there, I mean, there you go, right? Like yeah. once you understand that that is a very true, very strong, very integral statement, then you just instantly know that it's not your job or your purpose mm. to even attempt to say, hey, dude, you know, like there's a different way. I mean, they're on their own path <laughs> and you have to respect that. Like you said, sovereign is a great word. You have to respect yeah. their sovereign path mm. and their choices and they are going to get there. And again, you know, I love to play devil's advocate. Sometimes I look at people who aren't quote unquote hyper aware like you and me. And I say, Hey, they might have it easier than you and I, mm. because once you recognize <laughs> how crazy this world really is from being hyper conscious and being hyper aware, mm -hmm. dude, you can make a very strong argument that not being aware is a better path to take. I mean, again, not for the advancing of spirituality and planetary right. consciousness, but just for living in the matrix. Right. Right. Just like getting by, it's easier exactly. to blame everything and take the pressure off, so to speak, than to say, wow, like I actually am someone who has direct yes. correlation to this result, this outcome and, and how our world unfolds. And that right. can be, uh, people can take that as pressure a lot. Like, oh my gosh, there's so much pressure. There's so many people to, to support and serve. And also you can say, hey, I'm going to have fun. I'm going to play. I'm going to go create. I'm going to, you know, paint my, my brush strokes of my gifts all across the world. And whoever is ready to receive it, receives it. Whoever doesn't, doesn't. And I, that's why I love yeah. what you're doing, man. Like just owning the, the, the gifts that you were were really focusing on with the um, testosterone optimization, like that was a phase in your life and you're like yep. beautiful, awesome, epic science, awareness, understanding yep. the human body, like epic connections. Now, like let's leverage all that I've learned and actually, you know, take this thing to the next level, like skyrocket, accelerate it, man. I think I'm going to hire you as my agent, dude. Like, <laughs> everything you just said is like what I need somebody to position me. Cause like when people ask me, they're like, dude, you're the testosterone guy. You're like the number one world's expert 
you know, <laughs> on, on all of this, like everybody comes to you and yet you want to become Mr. Spirituality. What's the matter with you? You know, and it's like what you just said was so well and profound. Let me, let me just say this before we end this. And I don't know where we are. If we're not, I'm happy to keep going with you. I appreciate this, dude. This is amazing. It's a blast. It's a blast it's man. And this love and light. I, this is this is what I, I I say pretty much as much as I can when I get as deep as I can now. Mm-hmm. The key for awareness and increasing consciousness is elimination of fear. Mm. Fear is what keeps people in the service to self, mm-hmm. reverse polarized or negative polarized frequency. Because when you are fearful, you absolutely repel the vibration of love. Wow! And when you cannot accept and feel and receive love. And let me go even deeper. Mm-hmm. The Mesoamerican cultures, and again, really all the indigenous cultures around the world, it's all been suppressed. Mm-hmm. They believe in a spiritual um, knowing, which is known as Ani. In Japanese, mm-hmm. they call it Ani, mm-hmm. right? But it's, it's the same thing around the world. And what Ani means is a sacred reverence of all of life. So the animals, the rocks, the snakes, the grass, the the crystals, the mountains, the wind, the sun, the earth, the moon, everything is alive. Everything has consciousness. And when you wake up every single day knowing that everything is alive and everything has consciousness, you are going to love all of it. People get so caught up, Chris, and they talk about, man, the key is love, bro. You got to be practicing unconditional universal love and they miss the point that it's not a love like they think it is which is Mm. like you gotta love everyone you know the the hippies love one another no it's a respect and a divine reverence of all things when you have a divine reverence of all things you're never going to walk around being negative you're never going to walk around being hyper you know, judgmental or laying victim or blame or any of that stuff, you're going to always be like grateful and happy and excited because like, wow, man, I have this amazing opportunity. I'm walking upright right now and the sun is beating down on me. And I have this, you know, amazing earth planetary environment and grass and greenery and all these things. And you just, you feel that it's again, it's like an energetic feeling. And it's like, once you understand that you cannot vibrate fear and Again, you no, know, not to use society or modern technology or any of those things, but that really is the great tool of you know whoever the dark forces are. We could name a million things, right? Mm-hmm. The Kabbal, the Illuminati. Yeah. I mean, it doesn't matter. Whoever the dark magicians and rulers of the you know negative frequency matrix are, right. they cannot stop love, no. and all they can do is generate a frequency or behaviors or imagery or technology that creates fear. And it's up to you as the individual person to not be fearful. And, you know, if you really break this down and we get so, so meta, fear really is a feeling or a concern or being scared of the end, which is obviously the finite Mm -hmm. aspect of the physical meat suit expiring. And when you understand Ani and you understand quantum physics and you understand that energy is what we truly are. We are not these bodies. We are not these meat suits. We are literally bio photon plasmatic electrical charges. We are like an orb. Imagine, you know, for people to understand this, think of yourself as like a yellow glow glowing orb. Think of the movie cocoon for the older people um, who saw the movie cocoon and they pulled their skin suits back and Steve Gutenberg got blasted by the yellow being and he was like, oh. <laughs> that's what we are. Mm. We are literally nothing more than energetic, plasmatic, electrical charges whirling around in physical meat suits and we're not going to die. This body will die. Okay. Yes. But you are not going to die. Energy is infinite. It's constantly expanding and expressing. And so once you get rid of that nonsensical, and again, a lot of this is through religious oppression, you know, Abrahamic stuff, where they make you think that, you know, you're going to die, bro. And <laughs> at the end, where, where you're going to be judged. It's not that. You're going to live your energy, regardless of your, it doesn't matter your beliefs, by the way, religion has nothing to do with it. Your energy will continue to expand when this meat suit dies. So when you expand or, or understand that and you truly you know, really feel that, dude, you're not going to be fearful. 
Mm. Why would you be fearful if you know you're never going to die? If your energy is going to continue to go on infinitely, mm. why would you be fearful? You so that's it. You know, get to that level. Yeah. And I'm not saying if you're not where you and I are right now that you're going to get to that level, but you all of us can get to that level. Start studying quantum physics. Get this book. Read this chapter. You know, it's a very simple chapter. It's very, very easily to understand and recognize that your energy is infinite and you aren't going to die. Your body will die, but your energy is continuing and infinite and forever. And there's so much peace with that. I think like the oh. the, the uh, conquering of fear is total peace, just total. The, the Chris, when you wake up every morning knowing that the day is going to be amazing because mm-hmm. it doesn't matter what happens to you, because in the worst case scenario, right, your energy is going to leave your physical body and you're going to be like, <laughs> damn, that was an unbelievable experience. What's next? We're done already? Oh, oh I want to go again. <laughs> like, what's next? Bring it. I mean, that's that truly is the way all of us have to live. Yeah. And there's no reason that we can't start living like that. Mm. Who cares if you can't pay your bills right now when you're watching the show? Who cares if blah, blah, blah happens? I'm sick. I'm injured. I got this. All, all those things are just excuses. Let everything just drop away and focus on the reality that you are a perfect, energetic, plasmatic, biophotonic being who can literally live infinitely and express in so many different ways. And once you start understanding that, I mean, your life is going to change. Just again, stop the fear, stop the concerns of the lack and the scarcity and all these things that you don't have and start focusing on what you do have and then go from there, man. Amen. Jay, this is gold, man. Uh, I know we're beginning to wrap up now. I want to tell people how they can stay connected with you. What are the next steps they can take on their journey? And then we'll wrap it up with like a minute of final takeaways, final piece of wisdom. But how do people take those next steps with DJ Campbell? So the easiest way to connect with me is uh, you can email my team. I get, like I said, we'll send you guys out the okay. TOT Bible which again is way more than just testosterone optimization. It's 622 pages, over 800 or 792 research citations, uh, fitness, nutrition, uh, what we call agents of change, um, obviously hormone optimization, um, tons of stuff about um, spiritual fitness. And then the other book is the Metabolic Low Torch Diet, uh, which is this book right here, which is my first book on fasting, which is a book that anyone, male, female, regardless of physical condition, age or fitness level can follow and lose body fat fast. Obviously there's a lot of people today that are hurting uh, from the obesity epidemic and stuff like that. So those two things we send out to you for free. That's the easiest way to connect with me. Obviously my website, TOT revolution. I highly recommend that people to watch the show, go to join.totrevolution.com and you'll sign up to my newsletter. I have a team of amazing content writers every single day. An email comes out my email which is the only Monday afternoon Monday afternoon email you need to read is every Monday. And honestly, that's a bomb. Um, I, I put a lot of energy, a lot of time, a lot of effort into that to inspire people. Um, and then um, I would say that if you really want to see the true spiritual warrior, Jay Campbell, go on Twitter and follow me. And that's at TRT expert. Uh, but I make no excuses for some of the stuff that comes out from my Twitter handle. I have a very big audience, uh, but uh, you you will be interested and entertained if you follow me on Twitter. Dude, I love it. Jay, this is gold, man. So again, everyone listening and watching right now, go to TOTRevolution.com. Check that out. Uh, email, I believe you said it was contact at TOTRevolution.com to get those books, those two books. And definitely check out the two new books that Jay just sent out this year. And also join.TOTRevolution.com to get on the newsletter, get that bomb fuel for your Monday. And then finally, the Twitter at TRT Expert. This is gold. Jay, let's give them the final takeaway. Bring it home with some fire, man. So, man, my my final takeaway is it doesn't matter where you find yourself today in life. um, Embrace life with positivity, with exuberance, with passion, and with really a focus on treating every person that you come into contact with, Mm -hmm. with love and with kindness and peace. Because every single person, remember we talked about Ani, every single person is divine and sacred and free. And if you push that out into the universe, that is exactly 
what's going to come back. And honestly, the law of attraction is very simplistic. Most people can follow that, but it really does come down to quantum physics and everything. You are nothing more than a universal or a slash cosmic mirror. What you put out is what comes back to you, man. That's right. Jay Campbell, I freaking love you, brother. You're a powerhouse. Keep up the heat. Keep spreading the the great vibes and raising universal consciousness. This is just the beginning for both of us, man. So let's keep going, man. Let's keep igniting souls. Awesome, man. I appreciate the opportunity. Thank you so much. I appreciate you, Jay. I'll see you soon, okay? Okay, man. Bye-bye.